Oh boy, now this is a showdown that I can get behind. One of the largest known primate species to have ever lived, facing down the undisputed slithering king of life's biggest questions, the ancient impossibly large titan of boa snake of prehistory. You see, if you know anything about life's biggest questions, you'll understand that when the cosmic constellation properly aligns, we enjoy nothing more than pitting some of the more memorable entrants of our hypothetical simulations against one another. Sometimes science wins out, other times intellect and ingenuity do. But even more importantly, have you ever wondered who would win against Bigfoot or the Basilisk? Pretty much. Yeah, this is pretty much exactly that. Let's find out. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously ask the question, what if the Gigantopithecus fought the Titan of Boa Snake? Our best bet is that the Gigantopithecus would have resembled a giant orangutan, albeit probably not one that lived in some ancient ruin and lorded over his smaller primate denizens, but that's by the by. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we should probably outline the inner workings of our two opponents and weigh in on what they'd be bringing to this hypothetical showdown in the first place. In the blue corner, we have the king of all slithering kings, the largest serpent to have ever existed in non-fiction terms anyway, the undisputed champion of all terrestrial creatures of ancient history, measuring in at anywhere between 45 and 50 feet in length, and weighing in at roughly around 1100 kilograms, longer than a school bus and heavier than a rhinoceros, the titan of boa snake, the largest snake ever discovered in recorded history, and one that would have called the humid, vast jungles of South America its home roughly around 60 million years ago. You see, the Titan of Moas certainly dominated the turbulent landscapes of prehistory, reigning supreme as the prime predatory species of the planet after the dinosaurs had strutted and fretted their hour upon the stage. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. The thing is, the one important factor that we have to focus upon in regard to the Titan Bower Snake, and the one crucial thing that is going to make life very difficult for the Gigantopithecus, which we'll get to in a moment, is the sheer size of this creature. To put things into perspective, the largest animal on the planet and the largest animal ever known to have existed is the blue whale, a creature that measures in at roughly 98 feet, and one that dominates the seven seas by its sheer size alone. The Titan Bower is just over half the size of that blue whale, and it is a snake, a reptile, not a giant megalithic mammal, but still, a snake that is as large as half a blue whale is a far more formidable foe than any sort of humanoid could ever hope to face down. So here we have our contender, the Gigantopithecus, an extinct genus of ape that existed from perhaps 9 million years ago up to as recently as 100,000 years ago, and if you're a believer in Bigfoot, could also already have their ancestors potentially roaming around all sorts of unexplored forests or mountainous hidey holes. You see, the specifics of the Gigantopithecus are a little bit difficult to nail down given the fact that we've only ever discovered the teeth of this ancient humanoid in an attempt to try and piece things together and paint ourselves a picture of just exactly what the serpent would be dealing with. You see, if these creatures' dental records are anything to go by, the Gigantopithecus would have been the largest known primate species to have ever lived, standing up to nearly 10 feet tall and weighing anywhere between 550 and 600 kilograms. Granted, in terms of length, the Gigantopithecus is nearly one-fifth of what the Titan of Boa is, but in this hypothetical bout, size may not be everything. You see, despite its colossal size, the Titan of Boa, the progenitor of the Boa family of the reptile species, much like its modern ancestors, was purely a compression-based predator. Again, in a similar manner to the other Boa, they were non-venomous and thus relied on their ability to constrict and apply massive amounts of pressure through their bodies to squeeze their victims to death. Granted, the Gigantopithecus certainly wouldn't be off the table and entirely impervious to this method of constriction, but whilst being almost nearly 10 foot and weighing 600 kilograms, the most important part of the Titan of Boa's victory strategy would be in pinning down the Gigantopithecus in the first place. As you may imagine, whilst not impossible, that may be quite difficult to do so. And that win condition is astoundingly crucial to the deciding factor of this showdown. Because whilst we don't know a hell of a lot about the Gigantopithecus other than the contents of its dental records, we do know a lot about perhaps its closest ancestor, the orangutan. If you didn't know, orangutans are remarkably strong and also remarkably agile, particularly when they're careering their way across the jungle canopies of their home. In a rough sort of estimation, the average orangutan pound for pound has around 620% more muscle strength in its arms alone than the average human. That amount of force is incredibly indicative of how this would go down, and if we scale that upwards toward the Gigantopithecus, yeah, we'd likely be dealing with a primate of unrivaled upper body strength. Also, as a side note, it's incredibly important that we 
highlight this fact, orangutans are incredibly peaceful creatures and I wouldn't want to ever imagine them in such a violent showdown, but for the sake of this hypothetical, the information will have to do. You see, in terms of raw strength and in terms of actually executing their specific win condition, which is outmaneuver the snake and, well, bash its head in, given the right circumstances, the Gigantopithecus is a clear winner in this hypothetical bout. Sheer size and stature alone, as well as the anatomical advantage of being a four-limbed bipedal, on land, the Gigantopithecus has a clear win condition against the Titanoboa, even with its absolutely colossal length and size. Take a look at how a gorilla can easily dispatch an anaconda, and you'll have a rough idea as to how the Gigantopithecus would take down the non-venomous Titanoboa. However, there is one caveat to this showdown. The outcome of this battle would entirely depend on where it took place. Location in this sense, or the battle arena of this showdown, could give either of our contenders massive advantages or disadvantages when facing each other down. On land, which in all likelihood would be the only environment in which these two creatures would theoretically take place, the Gigantopithecus takes it easily. In water, however, in any aquatic environment as deep as the waistline of the giant primate, the Titanoboa would strike, wrap its massive body around its limbs, and clearly take the victory. So in that respect, if the Gigantopithecus fought the Titanoboa snake, it should certainly only do so on land. Well, there we have it. Our longest short answer to the question, what if the Gigantopithecus fought the Titanoboa snake? If it wants to stay alive, stay out of the water. Or stay out of the jungle, depending on whose side you're on, really. Well, what do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add to the matter? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Buggy Boy says, Jack Finch, you dirty... Was that a league reference? Oh, buggy boy. All of my references have some form of relevance to the rift. Is it not common knowledge that all disembodied floating voices are related to disembodied floating fists? And finally, Barry the Speedster says, your channel and top five scary videos are the best two channels in the multiverse. And yes, I checked. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know. You must be talking about the other me. I mean, the other Jack Finch. Um, yeah, it's kind of complicated, but on behalf of both of us, we thank you. Well, on that warm and welcome note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy.